You might think that the moon simply orbits the Earth, right? Well, it's not quite that simple. The Earth and the moon both actually orbit a common center of gravity, called the barycenter. This point isn't located in the middle of the Earth and moon. Instead, it's just below the Earth's surface, because Earth is much more massive than the moon. Think of it like a seesaw. If you and a much heavier friend sit on either end, the seesaw won't balance in the middle. It'll tip toward the heavier person. The same thing happens with Earth and the moon. Both bodies are pulling on each other with gravity, and they end up moving around this hidden point, like an invisible pivot. This concept becomes even more interesting when you start adding a third body into the mix, like the sun, because that's when things get chaotic, and we enter the realm of the three-body problem. Hey, this is Theos, and you are watching the cosmological reality where we unravel the inner workings of the universe piece by piece. The three-body problem. Newton himself was so frustrated by this problem that he once reportedly said, the system of the world perplexes me. That's right, the genius behind gravity found it perplexing. Now, I don't know about you, but if Newton found this difficult, I'm intrigued. Newton solved two body problems, but was concerned about gravitational tugs from larger bodies like Jupiter. Isaac Newton revolutionized our understanding of the universe with his laws of motion and gravitation. He could explain the orbits of two objects like the Earth and the Sun, using simple math. This is the classic two-body problem, which is solvable with Newton's equations. But here's where Newton got worried. What if a much larger object like Jupiter was nearby? Wouldn't its gravitational pull mess up the nice, neat orbits of the Earth and the Sun? Newton realized that the gravitational influences of more than two bodies complicate things. Imagine a tug-of-war with not just two teams, but three or more all pulling in different directions. How do you predict who's going to move where? Newton knew that this three-body, or more, interaction was going to be incredibly complex, and he even admitted that solving such problems exactly was beyond him. This concern was the seed for what we now know as the three-body problem. Henri Poincaré developed perturbation theory to address the complexities introduced by a third body. Fast forward to the late 1800s. Along comes Henri Poincaré, a brilliant French mathematician. He knew that the three-body problem was nearly impossible to solve. But rather than giving up, Poincaré introduced an incredibly clever idea. Perturbation theory. Imagine two objects, like the Earth and the Sun, have predictable orbits. Now introduce a third object, like a smaller moon or asteroid. This third body perturbs, or slightly alters, the orbits of the first two bodies. What Poincaré did was figure out how these tiny changes, or perturbations, build up over time. He didn't solve the three-body problem directly, but he helped create a framework to predict small deviations from simple two-body motion. A fun fact? Poincaré's work on the three-body problem led to the birth of chaos theory, the study of systems that seem random, but are actually governed by deterministic laws. In trying to solve a problem, he ended up discovering something even bigger. So. Here's the bombshell. The three-body problem has no general solution. This means that there's no simple equation you can write down that will give you the exact positions of three celestial bodies at any future time. Why? Because once three or more objects are interacting through gravity, their orbits can become wildly unpredictable. This leads to chaotic orbits. In simple terms, Chaos means that even the smallest change in the initial positions or velocities of the bodies can lead to completely different paths over time. It's like trying to predict the weather. A tiny change, like the flap of a butterfly's wings, could lead to a storm halfway around the world. Similarly, with the three-body problem, tiny changes in the initial conditions make it impossible to predict the long-term motion of the bodies with certainty. The restricted three-body problem, with a small third body, can be solved under certain conditions. Here's a small consolation. There is a simplified version of the three-body problem called the restricted three-body problem. In this case, one of the three bodies is much smaller than the other two, like a satellite orbiting the Earth and the Sun. Because the third body is so tiny, it doesn't affect the motion of the other two bodies much, but it still gets influenced by their gravity. Under these conditions, you can actually solve the problem mathematically. Scientists use this version to calculate stable points like Lagrange points, places in space where a smaller object can remain in a stable position relative to two larger bodies. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope is parked at one of these Lagrange points, 
using this principle to stay in a fixed position relative to the Earth and the Sun. Lagrange points represent areas of balance between gravitational forces, allowing objects like the telescope to remain stable and avoid drifting. But stability isn't the whole story when it comes to celestial motion. In fact, while some points in space are stable, others are chaotic. This brings us to an interesting phenomenon in celestial mechanics, chaos theory. Chaos in celestial mechanics means small changes can lead to vastly different outcomes over time. The idea might seem abstract, but it's rooted in the unpredictable nature of dynamic systems like planetary orbits. Even tiny differences in starting conditions can cause systems to evolve in unexpected ways. Chaos might sound like an abstract idea, but it's very real in celestial mechanics. When we say a system is chaotic, we mean that tiny changes in the initial conditions can lead to dramatically different outcomes. Picture this. You're tossing a coin. If you toss it exactly the same way every time, you'll get the same result, right? Now imagine the tiniest change in the force of the toss. That small difference might send the coin spinning wildly in another direction. Because of the chaotic nature of the three-body problem, precise long-term predictions of the motion of celestial bodies are impossible. This doesn't mean we can't make short-term predictions. For example, we can predict the Moon's orbit around Earth fairly well, over a few years or even decades. But if we try to predict it thousands or millions of years into the future, the chaotic influences of other bodies, like the Sun and other planets, make it impossible to be precise. In space, even a slight gravitational nudge from a passing asteroid could send a planet or moon into an unexpected trajectory. So, while we can model and simulate, chaos ultimately limits how accurately we can predict the future of these dynamic systems. By elaborating on these points with a mix of history, relatable analogies, and current applications, we make the fascinating complexities of the three-body problem more engaging and easier to grasp.